Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. If you guys are fans of the channel and have seen a lot of our videos, you might recognize this right here. And the reason this is here and not at my place is because it went back to the original owner, Denny, whose dad built the truck. Now, this is all a roundabout way to get to the point of all this, which is I am out at Denny's place and this man has a lot of cool homemade equipment, just like this Perkins combine engine powered turbo diesel truck that they've got sitting that have been in the shed for a long time. And today, we're gonna see if we can get some of that running. So Denny and I have already done the grand tour. He showed me that I have about three weeks of content out here uh, <laughs> of, of actual work to film. And we decided, let's start things off with, I think this right here is gonna be our first attempt. Denny, what the hell is that? Just a home-built garden tractor. Probably built about 19, I'm guessing 43. Holy cow. It's got a Model A front end, Essex four-speed transmission, and got a Rockney rear end out of a truck. So this is something your dad built, I'm guessing? Yeah. I noticed that around here. That yeah. Must have been one handy man. Bored. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or that. If you had to take a wild guess, when do you think it last ran? Probably back in the 90s. Oh, so that's not terrible. A mere no, 30 I mean, years. And I'm guessing at that. Like I said, I don't even really remember what was wrong with it. It could have just been tires. While we're here, uh, what the hell is this thing? That's a garden tractor. Holy and cow. it had attachments that went on it. Noticed it's not wore out, because I imagine it was quite a piece of machinery to try to run. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's probably I mean, used it, it four times and went, screw that. <laughs> it went where it wanted to go. <laughs> I think it's, it's all cast iron. Is this a hit and miss motor in here? I don't think it was hit and miss. It just, just, old. just, uh, just an old flywheel type motor and the drive and everything ran off of the crankshaft. Is this the flywheel out here or is this? Yeah, that was and actually that where you spun it to start it, I guess. Oh man. But it's been stuck ever since we bought it. Okay, so that one that one's out. Yeah. At least for a an afternoon video. Well, let's dig this thing out we of can, here and get a better look at what we got. This. Let's see if she'll turn. It still does. Alright, go for the first ride. <laughs> this thing feels like it weighs 900 pounds just sitting on it. It just squishes the earth under it. <laughs> This isn't going to feel right not working in the weeds somewhere. It's too nice in here. All right, there it is, whatever it is. Let's uh, get the tools and dust this thing off and see what we're working with. So yeah, as you can see, Denny and his family have been building just the craziest shit for years. And on top of that, they're muscle car enthusiasts. These guys love horsepower and going fast and just building stuff from whatever's sitting around the scrap pile. So. There is a ton of potential out here on this farm. 
and we're going to do as much as we can to bring you guys a good glimpse into the past of what it was like when people built their own equipment back in the day and the ingenuitive little things they did to make stuff work. I've always been absolutely fascinated by that kind of stuff and I hope you guys are too because we're going to go digging into it for a few days and see what we can find. With that being said, tonight I'm actually only doing that one lawnmower as fast as I can because we leave for power tour this Saturday and we have to get the Le Mans ready and I still have to make this video and I have not even touched the car yet. So let's get the tools and get digging into this thing. Danny, you're probably going to know what these numbers mean more than I do. Yeah, I'd have to get my book. I'm going to take a wild guess and say that book is older than me. Not unless you're older than 1946. <laughs> that was a good year, 46. <laughs> Holy crap. Okay. Let's see if we can find. Horsepower. AEH. 6.1. Well, it depends how many RPM you're running. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it looks like probably 6.1 is, is, yeah. We got an updraft carburetor. That'll be the first one of these I've worked on in years. First one ever on the channel. And we got some belts here. Well, yeah, those are the belts that we use to run a generator. Okay. This is the clutch over here? Yep. Oh, look See, at that. It's that belt tightener right here. All homemade. And the, there's a brake up here too. There's drum brakes in the rear. I think they still work, I can feel them hitting the tire. Oh, there's a left and right drum brake, okay. Yeah. And the clutch has a flywheel brake. Wow. So where's your throttle here, isn't it? Yeah. The damn thing still moves. Probably hard pressed to find parts for any of this. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I don't even know what year of truck that rear end come out of. So did he shorten it down himself? Yeah, yeah. That is incredible. Made out of scrap metal and whatever's laying around. Which if you said this was built in forty three, that was right well, after. Well, approximately forty three. After the that'd war? Be, yeah, that'd be fairly close. Forty three. From what I understand in, in this area back then you couldn't get shit for metal so you were stuck yeah. with whatever you had sitting around yeah i mean you, we just that's where dad was probably better than a lot of guys no, as far as welding because he could take a little piece of rusty metal like that and it's still together 70 years later his welds are better than what i put on and i have a nice new welder on clean steel <laughs> this come from a, a, about a Pre-1939 Montgomery Ward welder. We still got that too, by the way. <laughs> I don't think we want to get too wild. It looks pretty weather checked there. Keep her under highway speeds, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's a shame too, because those tires were pretty darn new when we... Yeah, as I said, it's got nipples on them up here. Yeah. And down the treads. I couldn't believe that one took air. There was a huge gash in the side of it. You say you guys used to take this thing down the river and across the creek and... Oh yeah, we drove it all over heck. <laughs> that was, that was our go-kart. This is the go-kart right here. Well, let's see if it runs still. Before we started turning wrenches on the motor, I felt it was necessary to sit back and have a beer with Denny and listen to some of the stories he had of this machine in its prime. Yeah, we had, I think it was a 12 horse International Cub Cadet. And we just tied him bumper to bumper. We took off out the door. That was a, a hydrostatic on the Cub Cadet. He squawked the tires, started out the door. And we just dumped the clutch on this and pulled him right back in. <laughs> didn't, he, didn't even hardly squeak the tires. But this thing has a lot of power. I know we pulled, tore down an old barn and we had some big rocks in the foundation and we pulled them out with this. I can remember setting on the front end on the motor to keep <laughs> the front end on the ground. But it, it lifted the front end right off the ground. Holy That's crap. when it had traction type tires, okay. not these snow tires. But. After our beer, we set right back into work on getting this thing running. Well, Denny, it looks like I found our rip cord back here. Yeah. Ooh, big old cloud of dust comes out with it. I 
work that in. It's feeling better already. Oh, the inner is good. <laughs> well, let's go. uh, let's pull that plug out. Throw some oil down it. And uh, this whole clutch system just blows my mind. It's held together with a single chain link right here. And just rollers and even adjustment for this pad up top. Just the, the, the resourcefulness of this generation of people is blows my mind and I love to look at it. There we go. That's looking better. Ooh, it turns over pretty pretty hard. Yeah. <laughs> Well, here, let's uh. Yeah, let's give her a little in them. Oh, you know what? Did that help? Yeah. There we go. Now we're making it places. Wait a minute. Livestock. <laughs> <laughs> Getting the bugs out of it. Yeah. <laughs> This one to tie our clutch down. Right. Yep. Oh, we got a spark. Oh, 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 hell yes. This is going to be easy. Can we use a whistle? Yeah, not bad. Enough to spark. Yeah. That'll do. Figure we ought to check the oil before we put the plug back in and throw some gas at it since it's pretty much ready to run already. Ooh. Oh, there's some down in there. There's some in there. Oh, yeah. It's halfway back to dinosaurs, yeah, it's... but it's still slippery. Yeah. So, Denny, you had mentioned to me if our uh, magneto had lost magnetism, there was a way to remagnetize yeah. it a little bit. What's your method there? Well... Guy can make one, and it, you just make a like a magnet. Okay. Hook it up to a battery. Oh. And then it just remagnetizes the old mag. Huh. That's you can easy. probably go to YouTube and find a way to do it. Yeah, find out how to make them and how to use them. And it, it's been a long time since I I done one of those. Oh. <laughs> That's one way to clean your tank is just wait for all the gunk to evaporate. Yeah. Flushing out the tank, trying to get some of that crap out of there. This thing's too heavy to really wiggle. Yeah. I kind of just wiggled myself and it stayed there. Well, there she goes. So would this be a 40s motor? Um, or even older? It might. Fuel flows right to it. It's still got spark. It spins over. And I imagine it has well over 10,000 hours on it. Holy cow. Okay, well. After a couple beers, a bunch of great stories, and a little bit of tinkering, it was finally time to put our spark plug back in and give this thing the first couple serious pulls it's had in almost 20 years. Uh, I think this is going to be a long haul. That's not a testament to what was made back in the day. I don't know what it is. That was the second good pull. <laughs> that's, that's about as good as it ever started. <laughs> yeah. As hard as that pulls over, I can't believe it still fires. Yeah. I'm just.
After a little bit of playing with our high and low mixture screws, we had this thing running like a champ, and it was time to take it for a lap around the yard for the first time since the early 90s. Remember where reverse is? Behind it. <laughs> <laughs> Two boogies. <laughs> He's out of here. Look at, that, look at that tire. Oh man. Oh, that is so cool. I wrote it. I didn't have my cell phone. It didn't exist. Yeah, I have it. Before cell phone. <laughs> there we go. It's too good. It doesn't want to stop. Yeah. <laughs> That is incredible. That was quite a deal. Trip to the past? Yeah. And you know, so far the carburetor ain't just sitting there flooding. I can't believe that's working that well. It went from, well, this motor's a little tight, to, well, let's see how well we can make it idle in two pulls. Yeah. And yeah. then driving I, around the yard. I just, that astounded me right that, there. I could not believe, you would have thought we shut it off four minutes ago. Yeah. Drive it. <laughs> oh, I might have to. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, as I recall, that's probably about the way it usually started. First one, no. Second one, maybe. Third one, yay. Yeah.
got good sparks. This no loss of magnetism in that magneto. She's good to go. What was it designed for? To, to tow stuff or to? Well, I tell you, uh, Dad made a blade for it. Okay. So we could grade, you know, dirt and stuff. I mean, basically anything you hooked onto that. Yeah, it was just a. That's what we used it for. It was just a pulling. It was yeah. a small tractor. Yep, that was used for just about everything you could imagine. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen. That is the homemade 1940s tractor built by the same man who built the diesel Perkins that you've seen in uh, other episodes. I'm kind of at a loss for words here. I don't know how to end this one. It's, it's not really the ending of a video, but more so the beginning of a series where we're going to come explore the designs and the creations of yesteryears and get Denny's stuff running. <laughs> Yeah. And drink yeah. drink a bunch of beer. So with that, I want to thank you guys for joining in on this quick, easy episode of Junkyard Digs. Had a lot of fun. Looking forward to coming out here and hanging out with Denny way more often and getting a lot of this old stuff alive and running once again. He's got a ton of old generator motors, tractors, a lot of hit and miss engines, uh, some stuff like this, diesel, sim just anything that you can imagine is out here and a lot of it's been sitting for a number of years so whatever he'll let us turn a wrench on we'll turn a wrench on until next time we'll see you guys right here next week on junkyard digs make sure you like and subscribe leave a comment below we'll see you in two weeks peace <laughs>